Uh, one of the things that really astonished me when I learned about them uh, is is money. How analogous money really is. Uh, the most naive model. Um, I think most kids think like that. The most naive model is to treat the particular banknote you have as a real money or your shilling as a real money, your coins or your bank account numbers. I mean, the the digits, uh, the saving digits showing how much money you have inside your bank account. You treat it. You treat it as a, as if it is a tangible, absolute substance. That is the most naive model. Uh, the reason is money is actually uh, has a zero substance. It's purely analogous, and um, I think anyone who 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 has studied elementary economics uh, was actually told this. Uh, when I was uh, in my final year of high school, I actually took. Uh, basic economics and I remember dearly there was a chapter talking about money and uh, on textbook uh, it wrote that money is merely a medium of exchange a store of a value of course of course uh, with hindsight this is very obvious but actually for me especially when I was a teenager uh, the sentences, those sentences appeared to be meaningless and I treated it axiomatically and eventually I just uh, vomited them out in exam. Hence, uh, hence money being so am- amorphous, uh, those two sentences were very hard for me to understand, to comprehend. But those two sentences are actually right. In a basic economics textbook, they are actually right. Money is merely store of value. And in fact, it is a very, very precarious, temporary store of value, a medium of exchange. And uh, let's think about that. Uh, to, I think one of the... One of the good way to truly understand something is to always think uh, before that thing existed before that thing existed how how was the world look like before that the advent of that particular thing for example um, you could truly understand um, uh, this is also aligned with the with a really classic idiom proverb saying that you only truly know the value of something after you 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 lost it and similarly we need to imagine a world before money was invented uh, before money was introduced and uh, i think most people know somewhat uh, vaguely before that we had system barter all right typically people exchange things and uh, what does it mean for example we can imagine uh, societies before money was invented how prim- primordial uh, they were uh, probably a lot a lot of people were farming they were farmers they were fishermen probably uh, there were a number of tailors uh, weaving and knitting clothes by hand maybe a few blacksmith uh, uh, smelting metal by hand, um, yeah. So so, b- the pr- primordial societies uh, were like that. But nevertheless, one person couldn't do everything, and they have to trade. And basically, the word trade is the entire uh, cornerstone, the bedrock foundation of the word money. So. Typically, uh, let's say I am a hunter or farmer. I'm good in producing food, and uh, and you are a blacksmith. You are good in smelting iron, uh, or or copper, and we need to exchange because I can't do both things, and neither you you could, and uh then we we negotiate. Uh, you use how many iron bar that you have smelted or or the. Or basically, as a farmer, I need I need some tools, right? Like like the sickle, like scythe, uh, like some rake, and hence you made all those tools. And I uh, planted and harvested a lot of grains. We do exchange, and uh, that is the the gist and essence of trade. And of course, uh, back then it was very hard because you have limited. 
uh, you don't you didn't have medium of exchange and therefore you have to negotiate the exact things both people want in order to exchange and today we have money it's very convenient because uh, of course first of all the economy has developed and progressed so well other than those typical blacksmith farmer and fisherman we have such a diverse economy people are actually producing things that are so trivial uh, but people somehow somehow people want it. It becomes a kind of uh, goods and services in the market. For example, uh, sex toys. For example, I don't know circus circus uh, video games. Uh, for example, violins. Uh, for example, pianos. For example, um, mm, something as trifling as um, a football game. You have to buy a ticket to watch a football game. So all these things are on surface. They are actually quite trifling because they seem to be not important for survival. But nevertheless, since we have it, we might as well enjoy it, right? And and our economy has developed so well. And uh, uh, today we actually trade. So for example, again, we use an, uh, uh, the most rudimentary example of a farmer. A farmer versus a, a, a versus a circus performer. So a farmer, he himself or maybe his son or daughter want wants to watch a circus performance, and a circus performer, all right. Uh, could trade trade his performance with uh, the grains the farmers produce using money, and hence this trade right is 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 everything is basically what money really is, and so 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 to really extrapolate to really reduce money into first reasoning uh, using first reasoning principle, it actually means, uh, trade. Okay, it, it is something as amorphous as trade. And if you try to understand trade, what does it mean? It means 7 billion people. What uh, what each of them is capable to do. No one could predict that. Every single day, every single person has different talent, different desire, different skills. And not only that, every single day they have different mood, feeling like doing, doing different things. And also... Uh, seven billion people you have to um um it's not about only performing and producing the products and services it's also about the consumers the consumers have to want your thing for example the farmer has to want and desire to watch a circus performance for a trade to happen and this is really money but of course uh, money most of the times we reduce it into numbers as if it gives an illusion it is something so atomic, but it actually it is not. It really depends on 7 billion people, what people really want, what as a consumers, which is actually highly capricious. Every single day I want different things. And then also depends on the producer, 7 billion people, how many of them co could coordinate, uh, co coalesce together and produce products and services. These kind of things are really, really capricious, very, very hard to model. And hence, it is much more uh, precarious, much more vagarious than uh, what the number on your bank notes uh, denotes. And and um, and and that's the thing that really surprised me. Uh, it is a perfect analog, zero substance, hundred percent analog regarding trades, and. Um, and that is where the problem lies because people, when people don't really try to do the hard work of first reasoning to really dig very, very deeply about money and trade, people start to misunderstand money as those numbers on your banknotes. And when you misunderstand it, you start to have all kinds of garbage. First of all, you can call the desire that I could control money very well. I could... Uh, form a plan and f forecast the future or I want to make 5 million by 5 years you do this kind of forecast and uh, and and if it is something so whimsical so vagarious right when you try to forecast it it often fails and then it gives you suffering and also uh, the, the main problem is is um, people start to uh, speculate in financial markets 
people, uh, all kinds of business or financial gurus uh, come out to teach people or how to make money. Uh, if you put it very in a very uh, first reasoning method, right? You think about it, right? To talk about hacks, to talk about techniques to make more money, it is as if to talk about hacks to facilitate more trades among other people. So, so imagine you are living in a village with hundred people. Suddenly, one day you become a financial or or financial or business gurus, and you tell people, "Oh, I can teach you how to manipulate other ninety nine ninety eight villages." I can make them want whatever you are producing, and at the same time, I can also make you magically produce a product or services that the ninety-eight villagers want a lot. When you try to put money in that terms, right, in the in the actual trade terms, right, things become very preposterous, and this is what I think、uh, finance really is. People, it is very voodoo. People. Millions of people in the financial markets talking about plans, strategies, as if it is something reducible into, uh, into, cause clear cause and effects. It is certainly not physics because physics is not whimsical. Physics are atoms. They are they, so far they are still predictable. And that is what、uh, really fascinates me: money, how whimsical it is, and that also、uh, segue into another topic, which is how to actually really make money. And when when I say that, I don't mean it in the sense of a financial guru telling you ten steps you should do, because I I am aware how much. Variables as there are involving、uh, making money, and in fact, even those who successfully made a lot of money with high net worth every single day, it is as if、uh, a Damocles sword is hanging on the head. The head.、Uh, if you if you don't really know what is Damocles sword, it is a Greek mythology talking about a king having a really sharp、uh, sharp and lethal sword hanging. Above his head, and not only that, the sword is hanging by a thin,、uh, a thin strip of hair. Maybe it's a horse hair. I can't remember. So the sword will fall on it every single time. This is what high net net worth people are: the businessmen, the successful Hollywood actors. They actually face imminent risk of failing every single day. And. And at any point of time, it is possible for their net worth to fall, for their money to lose,、uh, for them to lose money because of competitions in the free market. Everyone could do everything, could innovate, and hence, uh, uh, I'm going to talk about how to make money. But it is in a very general, vague sense. Uh, first of all, I I just want to point out how much variables are there if you want to truly make money. First of all, you have to have consumers to、uh, who are willing to pay you, and for consumers to willing to pay you, you have to make really great products and services, and and that and and from that,、uh, you can already start to imagine. First of all, you yourself alone can't do everything. You have to have workers. You have to have machines. All right. You have to have the right machines. You have to buy from the right suppliers. You have to hire the talented workers,、uh, and then you have to manage the right workers so that they don't become sullen. They don't. They don't really rebel. And of course, not only that, you have to do promotion. And in a vast market, seven billion people, you have to face imminent. Endless competitions. You have to try to monopolize a small market, become really famous,、uh, become the guy where oh, let's say you sell product X. You want consumers, whoever who is inter who are interested to buy product X. The first name they think about is you. You want that, and not only that, there are a lot of complex matter. You want、uh, government regulations to be in your favor. They don't、uh, pass law to forbid your products, and also.、Uh, You also want um, um, some kinds of external factors. Maybe it's、uh, other products driving your sales. I'm running out of time, so basically this is a very brief summary of what is money, is trade. There are a lot of factors and variables. I will stop here and see you.